Good morning, church. Welcome to worship on this 29th day of August 2021. It's so good to be together, even though we are apart. My name is Tim Ziegler, and I'm the lead pastor here at Westside Church. Go westsidechurch.org. There are a couple of exciting things that I would like to point your attention toward as the calendar changes from August to September, which means things like back to school, back to college, beginning school, beginning college, new career opportunities, and basically just new opportunities for so many different people within the life of our congregation and online community. First, some really good news. We're so pleased to introduce to you for today, Sydney Richards. She is our new Director of Discipleship. This is um, an important position here at Westside as she will be helping to lead our children and youth ministry departments as well as connecting with all of those persons along their spiritual faith formation journey. I'd like you to uh, just receive her and to uh, make a chance to try to get to know her, whether it's in person or at some of the events that we'll be scheduling here over the course of the next few weeks. She is a recent graduate in 2020 from Duke Divinity School, and we are so, so pleased to have Sydney Richards joining us on the staff team here at Westside. Tomorrow, August 30th, from about 7 to 8 p.m., we're looking for about five or six additional volunteers to join us out on the lawn as we take down the tents that have been a part of our preschool program outdoors during the summer. So if you're available, we would love for you to join us. We've got to make sure that we get these down so that we can have as much football parking fundraising as we possibly can. It's almost time to reach out to Alpha House, one of our important mission opportunities here at Westside. The week that we will be there is September the 13th through the 19th. There are signups that are already available. Um, one of the things that we're looking to do is just make sure that everything is in good order there with food drop-offs and whatever games and activities might be able to be provided to help these homeless individuals and families in need during this time. So if you would like more information, look for Ann Andraska or Kendra Brewer as we look forward to that week coming up. This month we finish celebrating and supporting, not really though, right? Our community outreach offering for August, which is Motown Mission. Motown is an exciting mission opportunity for our youth and young adults and families in the city of Detroit. And uh, our church has been strongly connected with this group for the last several years, and we continue to be connected as well. There are a number of different ways that Motown Mission teaches people to get involved with their local communities, including bag lunches for the homeless, neighborhood cleanups, urban farming, and daily worship. So if you'd like to contribute financially to Motown Mission, I'd invite you to text the word community with the dollar sign first to 84321. That's right. Text the word community with the dollar sign then first in the message text to 84321. And that amount that you would like to give um, will be given to support Motown Mission. If you'd like to join us in person, we are gathering in person, whether it's on the lawn or if the weather is decent, not too humid and hot or rainy, then we will um, be outside. But if any of those other preconditions exist, we will be inside and we would invite you to join us uh, 1030 on Sunday mornings um, in either of those capacities moving forward as well. Would you pray with me this morning, please? Gracious and loving God, Whenever we look at the news these days, our hearts are torn apart through suffering, through war, famine and fire and disease. Help us to be able to be your light, to shine that light for others, to be a voice of hope, compassion, empathy, love, grace, and truth all the while seeking out justice. We pray for all of these things in Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. Well, at this time, I'm going to toss things over to Maggie Burke, our Director of Music Ministries. Maggie! Thank you, Maggie. Today's scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 1 through 8, verses 14 through 15, and 21 through 23. The Pharisees and some legal experts from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They saw some of his disciples eating food with unclean hands. They were eating without first ritually purifying their hands through washing. The Pharisees and all of the Jews didn't, don't eat for, without first washing their hands carefully. This is a way of observing the rules handed down by the elders. Upon returning from the marketplace, they don't eat without first immersing themselves. They observe many other rules that have been handed down, such as the washing of cups, jugs, pans, and sleeping mats. So, the Pharisees and legal experts asked Jesus, Why are your disciples not living according to the rules handed down by the elders, but instead eat food with ritually unclean hands? He replied, Isaiah really knew what he was talking about when he prophesied about you hypocrites. He wrote, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Their worship of me is empty, since they teach instructions that are human words. You ignore God's commandment while holding on to rules created by humans and handed down to you. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. Nothing outside of a person can enter and contaminate a person in God's sight. Rather, the things that come out of a person contaminate the person. It's from the inside, from the human heart, that evil thoughts come, sexual sins, thefts, murders, adultery, greed, evil actions, deceit, unrestrained immorality, envy, insults, arrogance, and foolishness. All these evil things come from the inside and contaminate a person in God's sight. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God.
Today's Tiny Desk Sermon focuses on our summer sermon series, Still Speaking, Sacred Stories for Hope-Filled Souls. And today we're talking about honesty. We're talking about being honest with ourselves and those around us as to where we find ourselves amidst our faith journey this day. Jesus is talking to a bunch of Pharisees and leaders, and he tells them that he can sort of see right through them. He knows that what they proclaim to be about is not where their hearts are, and he even references the words from the prophet Isaiah by saying, Where your disciples, why are your disciples not living according to the rules handed down by the elders? I'm sorry, Isaiah really knew what he was talking about when he prophesied about you. He wrote, This people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Their worship of me is empty since they teach instructions that are human words. You ignore God's commandment while holding on to rules created by humans and handed down to you. He goes on, Jesus goes on to talk about the ways in which what defiles a human isn't what they put in, but it's what comes out. That's how we can understand where a person's heart truly is. If we're just talking about hope and joy and love and grace and forgiveness and prayer and praise on Sunday morning, but those elements are not being lived in our daily lives, then we might find ourselves being accused in a similar fashion to the Pharisees. Our hearts may actually be far away from God. But when people see what comes out of us through our words and actions, through our thoughts that become actions, then they know how much we are trying to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. I find myself reflecting on that utterly honest axiom from John Wesley. I shared this recently in a letter to our board, one of my pastor's reports. Preach faith till you have it, and then, because you have it, you will preach faith. While much of our world continues to enter into a new chapter of post-pandemic life, paradoxically, while the Delta variant surges, we at Westside are left with a number of questions, centering on things like, how do we engage with a congregation that we still do not see in its fullness in person? As people re-enter theaters and restaurants and coffee shops and airports and grocery stores, why does in-person worship participation seemingly lag behind? If the church truly has moved outside the building in these last 18 months, then what are the memorable, reasonable, transformative experiences that our community can engage in in meaningful and substantive ways? How have things changed? How can we be a part of the change while continuing to meet people where they are and encouraging all of us to be honest about where we are on our own faith journey? One of the greatest gifts that Westside can give the world is to model the gift of faith. It is a gift. In the midst of a culture where faith is seemingly pushed aside, we get to model faith in Jesus in order that the world might be transformed. We are people of faith. We are people of hope. But 17 going on 18 months into a global pandemic, even these wonderful qualities can seem like they might begin to wane. And yet, we preach and exude faith in the midst of difficult and trying times in order to be a bastion of hope, reconciliation, peace, grace, truth, justice, equality, and equity. Even and especially when we don't feel like we have it, we preach these things and live them out. And there's great wisdom and truth to be found in continuing to practice and to remember, even though we're unsure as to who is still on the journey with us. Our fall kickoff theme this year will be Know Every Name, Learn Everyone's Story, though even that might be modified as we're not sure exactly what in-person worship looks like week to week. But it is in an effort to get back to basics through an emphasis on relearning each other's names, faces, stories as we begin anew. Accompanying this worship theme will be an emphasis on 
re-engaging some of the basics of Christian discipleship, entering into Bible studies, small groups, outreach events, and fellowship. I am hopeful, deeply hopeful, for a season of growth, of making disciples, of greeting and welcoming new people. One of my favorite authors is the late Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, who writes these things that I think are important for us to keep in mind as we think about the future of West Side and worship and our faith journeys. It is customary to blame secular science, he begins, and anti-religious philosophy for the eclipse of religion in modern society. It would be more honest to blame religion for its own defeats. Religion declined not because it was refuted, but because it became irrelevant, dull, oppressive, insipid. When faith is completely replaced by creed, worship by discipline, love by habit, when the crisis of today is ignored because of the splendor of the past, when faith becomes an heirloom rather than a living fountain, when religion speaks only in the name of authority rather than the voice of compassion, its message becomes meaningless. This is sort of what Jesus was talking about when he's talking to those Pharisees and other followers. In fact, he uses a word that um, may be pretty graphic. It's about expelling all of food and stuff like that. I mean, it's pretty, yeah, so he's talking about we need to be honest where we are in our journey. We need to acknowledge the distance that we feel or the distance that we are from God. And we need to know that we will be known by what people around us know us by, by our outward attitudes, words, examples, actions, etc. Rabbi Heschel continues, Our goal should be to live life in radical amazement. Get up in the morning and look at the world in a way that takes nothing for granted. Everything is phenomenal. Everything is incredible. Never treat life casually. To be spiritual is to be amazed. And one of my other favorite quotes, never once in my life did I ask God for success or wisdom or power or fame. I asked for wonder, and God gave it to me. How often do we ask for wonder? How often are we seeking that out? How often are we portraying that and giving that to people through our forms of worship and service, conversation and conversation? How often... Do we want things just to be relevant instead of transformational? In thinking about the overall motivation for this class that I'm able to take and some of the graduate work that I just started, I was speaking with one of the coaches whose name is Bill. Sometimes we're talking about fly fishing. Other times we're talking about the state of the overall church. And during our conversation, he asked me something like, do you think that your church will treat this fall as a time to continue to do what they've been doing or as a time to start fresh. I replied by saying, Bill, I think that there's no real choice. We have to start fresh. We have to seize this opportunity as unplanned and as unasked for as anything we've ever dealt with, at least in our lifetimes, and use it to create something new. This isn't to say that what we've been doing is bad or wrong, but this is the time that has been given to us as a community of faith which looks for transcendence and transformation and awe and wonder. This is the time to do a new thing. We are continuing to do so many good things for the glory of God and the well-being of our community and world. We have aligned ourselves and continue to align ourselves with and our congregation with wonderful nonprofits who are able to accomplish so many terrific initiatives better than we could ever hope to do on our own. And as we look forward to this season of newness and boldness, of stepping out in faith, looking for transformation and wonder and awe, let us be reminded of some of these words by John O'Donohue, the late Celtic poet, who shares with us this poem for a new beginning, also something for us to keep in mind as we start that new job, start that new class year, start that new uh, school year, for a new beginning, in out-of-the-way places of the heart, where your thoughts never think to wander, this beginning has been quietly forming 
waiting until you were ready to emerge. For a long time, it has watched your desire, feeling the emptiness grow inside you, noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play with the seduction of safety and the gray promises that sameness whispered. Heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent, wondered would you always live like this, then the delight and your courage kindled, and out you stepped onto new ground your eyes young again with energy and dream, a path, of, a path of plentitude opening before you. Though your destination is not yet clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease in risk. Soon you will find home in a new rhythm. For your soul senses the world that awaits you. Friends, all of this is to say that God is not done with any of us yet. The world will know us indeed by our love, by our fruits, by our honesty and truth-telling. And we need to remember to preach faith till we have it. And once you have it, preach faith. Amen. Let's pray together this morning again. Gracious and loving God, this is a season of new beginnings as we welcome Sydney as a new staff member here. We look forward to the ways in which you will continue to use us to grow your kingdom here on earth. Challenge us and inspire us, motivate us. We remember to you all of the brokenness that surrounds us these days. And we pray that we might be forces that are used to mend. Hear us now, dear Lord, as you probe our minds and hearts and thoughts during this time of silent prayer. Hear us now, dear Lord, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, thank you so much again for joining me here this morning or on demand. Now, may we go forward from this place, surrounded by the Holy Spirit, continuing to be well, continuing to sing songs of hope and joy, and continuing to love and care for our neighbors. Go in peace. Amen.